Well, as Julie so eloquently put it to me just now, we're going to do a driving tour in the heart of Lanzarote. But don't worry, we're not going to just be driving all the way and, uh, and filming while we drive. We'll be stopping at various places en route. And uh, those of you who know the Arnhem well will know or will recognise that this road takes us down to Famara. Julie's driving, I'm trying to hold the camera steady, which is quite hard. You, you do a better job of this than me, I think, Jules. <laughs> I've got the easy seat this time. <laughs> so, um, I think some of these roads are the very best on the island, whether you're driving a car or you're riding a, a bike, they're just absolutely fabulous. The tarmac is beautiful, the views are stunning, and uh, we're in the bouncy car at the moment, the uh, electric car, which is a, a bit more bouncy than our other car, so apologies if this is jumping up and down, but uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. And you can see the cliffs of Famara just kind of looming into view there. We've got a bit of a heat haze. It's a hot day. It's around, uh, well, it was 33 in Aria. Um, in Tagise, it was 30 degrees, so it's probably low 30s down here in Famara. And those are the cliffs and in the distance there. You can probably just begin to see La Graciosa coming into view. Now, Famara was... Um, one of Cesar Manrique's favourite places on the island. Um, he absolutely loved it. He remembered fondly that his parents had a holiday home here. He used to come here as a child. And um, even in later life, he'd regularly come down and enjoy the beach at the weekend. He felt Famara always re-energised and inspired him. road continues all the way down into the village and we'll we'll stay with it and uh, talk you through it. It's grown considerably in the years we've been here. Um, the bungalows were, were there which are over to our right at the moment but the main town itself uh, over on the left has expanded quite a bit with um, low-rise apartment buildings put up uh, and a few more houses. A lot of people here turn right at the bottom of this road to go on to the beach road. If you're going to do that, just be aware that there can be some really quite deep sand in that section. We've seen cars stuck, haven't we? We have seen cars stuck and uh, having to be pushed out. Windy today, but I love it when the sand drifts across the road here between the dunes. Yeah, yeah, it is beautiful, isn't it? Uh, that windmill there, the um, locals of Famara are pushing um, uh, Tigise Ayotamiento to restore that because it's kind of emblematic, it's the entrance to Famara. But as you can see, all of this sand which is blown over from the Sahara um, is very, very deep. This is a very rough section of tarmac, but it's only um, probably a kilometre, less than a kilometre long, and the rest of the roads we're going to use are beautifully smooth. Of course, have the beach on the right now. And you'll see loads and loads of cyclists on this road. Um, they tend to go from Club de Santa and along here up to Tugize and on to Aria. We parked up in the village and uh, one of the things we wanted to look at was this new uh, parking. Which... And it's one way as well, isn't it? Yeah, so this road is now one way, it used to be two way. And um, all these new parking spaces, which you pull into on the diagonal, have been put in place. Some kind of surf dude know that. Now, of the villages we're visiting, Famara is the one with the most um, eateries. And there's a big selection here from little tapas bars to, yeah, high quality fish restaurants. Check out the side streets, which I just showed you, as well as these tapas bars on the front, but also the streets at the back there, um, because there are more restaurants 
behind and, and everyone tends to sort of park here and go into these uh, three or four tapas bars right on the front, which are really nice, but uh, you might find better value and more variety if you go into the side streets a little bit. So this is this diagonal parking I was talking about. Well, one benefit is that you can walk across the road and look in one direction, Jules. Looking out the park, it sort of hides the front, doesn't it, for the businesses now and the shops. It's not as inviting, I don't think. Really. But then on this side, you've got the laid back feel, haven't you, that we're used to. Yeah, I guess like. so. I guess you're right. I see what you mean. They sort of, particularly when they're a van's park, they kind of cover the shops, don't they? Yeah. Just had an impromptu lunch in uh, Las Bajas. Uh, I had a which is local fish but actually it was kind of like a fish cake and it was really nice yeah okay. you had some with me didn't you i did i did it was really nice it was um quite fishy but it was um i like the texture of it it was it was just like eating a fish cake but without the crumb on the outside exactly it was served on the bun and there was a bit of salad and some chips and a drink included in the price and what did you have jules i had a They're gluten free, um, not all that matters, but in case anybody's wondering, uh -huh. and uh, it was stuffed with cheese, um, fried egg, and an, an organic an, fried an organic egg, local fried egg, <laughs> and um, avocado. And uh, you shared that with me as well, and it was very, very nice. So, uh, worth popping in there if you're uh, in for Murra and looking for someone for lunch. And I know uh, a few people were just coming in for coffee and cake and ice cream and stuff like that. And they're out for breakfast as well, so we'll try and give that a try in the future. Yeah, I was saying I quite fancy a walk along Fumara Beach one morning fairly early and then go for breakfast there. Okay, so we're going to jump back in the car and head on up the road towards Stop. <laughs> and as the sign says, that is the end of Caleta de Fumara. So we uh, hung a left after the restaurant and we're now on the road towards Stop. And I, I deliberately say it like that, and we kind of all do here, because it's spelt Sue, S-O-O, you actually pronounce it so. And so everyone tends to say it very fiercely. Um, and this is another beautiful road road, isn't it, Jill's just... Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. Lovely tarmac, great for cycling, fabulous for uh, driving a fast car or riding a motorcycle along. Or well, going right through the middle of the desert. Yep, this is the desert, the Hable, as it's called, J-A-B-L-E. And this is all sand that blows over from the Sahara Desert. There's lots of interesting wildlife around here. Ubaras. Yep, Ubaras. Is there an English name for them, or is that what they're called in English? There's something busted, but I can't remember. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> like it. Um, what else do we got? We've got sweet potatoes grow here as well, don't they? Yeah, and they, the, I'm going to say the ancients, that's probably not quite right, but the older, the people that are obviously 50, 60, 70, 100 years ago, um, found ways to grow stuff in this, and I just don't know how they do it. It always amazes me, but quite a lot of this is, sections of it is planted, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll continue for a bit, and we'll um, pick up with you in sock. Okay. Poor Julie's got some speed bumps coming up, haven't you? But uh... <laughs> I think it's the poor watchers rather than poor Julie. <laughs> um, I've taken over the driving duties now, and um, the sun gets quite deep in this section, and it kind of flows all the way halfway across the island. You can see this field on the on the right is furrowed, not grown anything at the moment, but it has been ploughed for it. Yeah, and we're coming into salt now. So in, in the village here we've got quite a nice restaurant we've been to called Monsu, M-U-N-S-O-O, -O. perhaps it's Mung So. Mung So, yeah. Um, we enjoyed a sort of brunch style meal there. They're, they're open in the evenings and they kind of have chill out music and it's stuff. It's like a like cafe that. lounge, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? yeah. And they do some yoga there as well. So that's quite a cool place. There's a, a fairly big 
Sociedad on the corner, which I'll point out in a minute. Uh, there's a supermarket. There's one of the very vicious speed bumps. And it's just a small rural village, really, isn't it? But you're quite close to the coast. On the other side, you've got these stunning sort of red um, hills here. And on the other side of there, the, the sand continues to the coast. But you've also got the really uh, big waves and, and powerful sort of sea coming in. It, it feels nice to walk along there. Yeah, I agree. And, and this, if you go, we're going to take a left in a minute and head up towards uh, Monumental Campesino because we're we're doing, as we call it, the heart of the Lanzarote. But um, if you go straight on where we turn left, it, the road then just continues down into La Santa, which is another cracking place with uh, lots of great restaurants and fishing boats. Yeah, see the fishing boats we love coming. watching the fishing boats there. And there's a mixture of uh, traditional old houses and uh, more modern ones in this village, as you find in most of the villages. So we're making a left here now, and that building you'll see there is uh, the Sociedad. And that's always got um, loads of pickup trucks parked in it. <laughs> now you start to get a feel for how big the Hable is. It's a vast expanse of the island and it's it's protected area so it's 48% um, of Lanzarote is protected and this is part of it. You're not allowed to go and gather the sand up are you? Or stop its path so you're yes. not allowed to put fences up, it's got to have free movement. Uh, Manique, uh, <laughs> we're coming into Manique and these are the uh, strange traffic lights that people ask me about all the time. If you're not speeding they will go orange before you reach them. So the limit through that particular section was 40 kilometers an hour, and I went through at 38. So as you saw, the lights changed before I got there. But if you are speeding, if you're doing over 40 kilometers an hour, they will hold you on a red. Um, Munique, there's uh, not a great deal here, actually. There's a, quite a pretty little church. I believe there is a Sociedad associate out here but I'm not did, sure where. Did we stop in this one when we did the, oh what's it called, Dolores walk? We might have done. From Tahise. Uh, we did with um, with the president <laughs> yes, who was with the mayor us, at the time Oswaldo, but with yeah. Oswaldo yes we did stop in the Sociedad here and he bought us all a meal if I remember rightly. There was certainly some yeah food and refreshments laid on. There's another of those lights, and again it changed just before I got there to there it. Is. And there's the Teleclub or Sociedad on my left. We're in the village of Tiagua now, and uh, looking behind me there's a lovely view of the Famara Cliffs. Um, Tiagua has two lovely windmills, and we'll put a picture up of one of them. There's another over to the left as well at the moment, and a pretty little church. Sociocultural or Sociedad or Teleclub. And they're called Teleclubs because there was a time when they were the places that had the only televisions in the village. So everyone would go and watch the big TV programs and the lottery and stuff like that while enjoying a Kanya or a Hara of Cerveza. Tiagua's got some beautiful old buildings in it which unfortunately are in need of repair. It's got an excellent supermarket and again it has these um, lights that stop you if you're speeding. This restaurant coming up on the right is quite popular isn't it, Morelino? I was going to ask if you could remember the name, I couldn't, <laughs> but we've, we've had a, an excellent it's meal there with Italian friends. isn't it, so really nice pizzas and fresh Food. Yeah, and it's always got loads of cars outside. Casa Morellino. Okay. Now that's actually the end of Tiagua, but I don't know if you could pick up that Casona de Tau there, Jules. Is that where we... you did the wedding the other yeah. day? Yeah. Oh, okay. So as we just, just go to the right, I don't know whether you'll capture it. Just see the pit top of it. Yeah, big house on the hill there, um, which has now been opened as a wedding venue, and I did a wedding there couple of weeks ago, absolutely beautiful location. Another little village, Tau. This is Tau, T-A-O. Uh, two of our old 
oldest friends on the island live here, Ben and Zoe, who some of you may know, they own a cantina in Tegise. There was a bar, wasn't it? A bar, a cafe bar on the side road there. But I can't, I don't, David's, but I don't know whether he's still there or not. Okay. And it's, uh, there's a lot of sort of farming stuff around here, so we went past a load of grapevines just now. Yes. There are olive trees planted on my left. And then, as you can see, these roads are just still beautiful, lovely surface. Terrific long straights, interesting corners. And uh, we're heading for Monumento Campesino now. We've arrived at Monumento de Campesino, and as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a gorgeous day. Cloud in the sky, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lovely contrail up there. That's the closest we've got to a cloud. Now, Monumento Campesino means the monument to the peasant, the country worker, built by Manrique, designed and built by Manrique. And unfortunately the top of it blew off in the very strong winds uh, that we had, it was last week, the weekend before last, wasn't it? Yeah, 85, 90 yeah. kilometre an hour winds and... Uh, it did blow right off, but it was bent over, wasn't it? Damaged. Yeah, and the fire department had to come out and remove it for safety reasons. And you can see there's workers on it now uh, who are erecting scaffolding. Yeah, so they're going to put scaffolding up, I presumably, so that they can get up to the top and work on it. So we hope you've enjoyed your uh, little tour of the heart of Lanzarote, which is a phrase you came up with, Jules, which I really like. Yeah, well, it is a sort of central point, isn't it?